guys welcome to natasha's narrative if you've been on this um channel before welcome back um make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying this type of content click on the notification bell to see more videos coming up like comment share yeah whatever it doesn't really matter whatever makes you feel comfortable so today what i'm going to be talking about is um my gap year and kind of what i did throughout uh, yeah, what I did throughout my gap year, probably adding a bit of advice as to things that I, I wish I could have changed a little bit. But I'm um, just giving the overall kind of gist of what was going on. And I haven't actually talked about it in detail. But um, essentially, if you've watched my A-level video, is I think where I kind of left off was talking about what I got in my first batch of A-levels. Which was for A-S levels, I got two Bs and two Cs. Um, and that was biology, chemistry, no that's a lie that was biology psychology and um chemistry and maths were the two c's and then for my a levels overall i got two b's and a c so that was biology chemistry and then maths was the c and then obviously the as level um psychology that i'd already had um so i remember so that was like 2015 and i went in i can't remember if i came with my mum or not actually like the day was just horrible I think I've literally just banked it out but I remember going to school again the next day um because they were like oh um actually that day when I got my results they were like oh yeah you can go um into clearing and have a look because I only applied for I only had four options um and I didn't apply for another university um and all my four options were medicine so basically I'd already been rejected pre yeah i'd been rejected pretty early on from all my four offers so i knew that i was going to have to go into clearing or adjustment anyway um but i just wanted to see kind of like what grade i was going to get um and obviously my grades were not what i was expecting to get and i was really upset about it so i had to then like start looking into yeah looking into universities and then I just thought like this is not a smart idea like you've literally not even had time to like mourn over your grades like think about it like this is not the right time so I took a break and then I went into school the next day um to talk to them about possibly being allowed to like reset um even though I knew that they said they weren't taking any more reset candidates but like I always did well in school so I was like maybe they'll make an exception but they're like no um and then they tried to talk to me about some stuff um but yeah like that those two days are literally a blur and then I kept on looking and clearing and I think like to be honest clearing is the worst guys and why I don't like it is because you've just got these results that you probably didn't like um oh well yeah you've got results that you didn't expect to get because obviously you've applied to university with higher results thinking that you're going to get those and then all the places like the of the prestigious type of uni universities will go quite quickly so you're quite under the pump and under pressure and i feel like it doesn't actually give you any time to really think about like whether you want to do that course or not or go to that university or not you have to move so quickly and that's why i didn't really like it um and then i think it got up to probably like a week past results day um actually rewind i remember on results day as well all my friends went to the club and i was like i'm not going i refused to go out i just went out for dinner with my mom and um my fam yeah my mom my sisters and a couple of family friends because I was just so distraught, I was like, I'm not going out, but to be honest, mm, the things that I heard that were going on, I'm glad that I did not go out that day, no shade intended, but yeah, so then another week went past, um, I still hadn't really decided what I was going to do, um, so another week went past, and I still hadn't decided what I was really going to do, and I remember talking to places like um, Plymouth, because they had the exchange, like, um, program for medicine, if you did one first year, but then um, the person I spoke to, actually, she had tried it and she didn't manage to get in. So I was just like, oh my gosh, what if I end up applying to a university that does an exchange program in order to get into medicine and I don't even really like the university and then I have to end up doing biomed there? Basically, what I decided to do, because um, not that I would have hated Plymouth, I don't know how I would have found it, to be honest. But what I decided to do was because I didn't really know anything 
about the universities which is funny considering the way that I applied to Newcastle um, but yeah I decided that I just wasn't going to go to uni and I was going to resit um, so at that point I was not even planning on taking a gap year like if you had told me when I was younger like yeah even GCSEs if you'd been like oh yeah Tasha um, you're not going to get into medicine on your first try or your second try I would have been like you're lying or um, you're also going to end up taking two gap years I would have been like that's not true you must not be talking about the right person so I wasn't even planning on taking a gap year even at that point I was planning on going to school and resetting it but obviously at a different school um, so there were a couple of schools that had my exam boards because obviously I wasn't going to reset both years all I needed to do was reset some modules um, but basically at the same time as me wanting to reset these exams I also wanted to go to Uganda and do some work experience because um, I thought it'd be really really good for my um, application so basically what I decided to do is that like I was going to be an independent resetter um, and that means that I resat at well not at home but I studied at home I actually had um, two tutors one for biology who came in like I think I had her for like an hour a week and then my maths an hour or an hour and a half and then my maths tutor I'm pretty sure came for like an hour and a half or two hours a week and he also sometimes like helped me with my chemistry um, so that's what I decided to do but the rest of the time I was literally on my ones just banging out the content um, and then I went, I sat my exams at my old school, but as a private candidate. Um, so I didn't really know anyone who had done that before. But for some reason, I thought that, yeah, like I'm smart enough to do this. I am definitely capable. I don't know how I did it. I really don't know. I don't even know what it, I don't. Yeah, I don't even know how I had the confidence, considering that I wasn't doing well in school with teachers. I don't know how I thought by myself I was going to do a better job, but it is what it is. Um, so because I had a job um, and I just like worked as a waitress and stuff, I had like quite, yeah, a substantial amount of money. So I bought tickets to go to Uganda for October um, and I was staying there for seven weeks. So I came back just before Christmas because my mum didn't want me to spend Christmas in Uganda. So yeah, so I was there for seven weeks. I did six weeks of actual like um, work placements slash shadowing. I took off like about a week's worth, maybe a bit more because I ended up doing my BMAT in Uganda as well. So I took off a few days there. And obviously when I got to Uganda, I didn't go straight into placement. I think I took like a couple of days off as well or for the weekend or something but yeah basically six weeks I spent in total in placement I spent two weeks in a private hospital no two weeks in a public hospital four weeks in a private hospital um so the two weeks in the general slash public hospital um that's where I was first and I was in the maternity ward um for yeah for the most part shadowing like nurses um and doctors um and yeah, I learned, I saw a lot, I saw a lot of natural births, um, which I hadn't had the pleasure of seeing um, that much when I did my um, ob gynecology um, work placement in the UK. So I saw, I saw one when I did that, um, but when I was in Uganda, I saw so many, oh my gosh, like childbirth is no joke. Like, I, I never thought it was a joke because I, I've i watched, like, you know, this little docu-series that they do, like, one born every minute. But, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh, it's a good thing that you, you, you can't remember that pain constantly because I, I, I don't even know what to say. Just see, mm -mm, oh, gosh. I, don't, I just don't want to be graphic. But, yeah, it is not easy. Um, so I saw how like they administered drips, um, I saw a lot of cesarean sections and I also went to like the post um, natal kind of wards where mothers recovered and stuff with the baby. The most tragic part of my time that I was witnessing a stillbirth um, and the baby was full term, um, however didn't she, yeah the baby did not survive obviously and it was just it was yeah everyone was just really sad um obviously the mother was you know quite emotional 
um, I remember we, because she was actually in the postnatal ward as well, um, because she had the cesarean section to deliver, and I just remember seeing her, and you, yeah, it was it was really devastating. There wasn't, um, apart from obviously condolences and apologies, there's nothing much more that you can say, and it, it's so hard to be in that kind of position where you're like, I wish I could do so much more. Um, yeah. So it, it was tricky. I think when you go into work experience, be prepared that you might, what you might see might not be everything. When you go on to work experience, when you have work experience and you're doing placement, I think be prepared that like everything does not always go well. Sometimes people, you know, sometimes surgeries go badly and sometimes people do lose lives. I learned that I had to, as sad as I felt about the situation, as empathetic as I was, um, I had to learn how to have some sort of emotional distance, otherwise you will just leave, you know, every time that something goes badly, you will just leave crying all the time and you won't be able to continue doing your job um, because unfortunately um, this is the reality of medicine, some people don't get better. Um, so that was really sad. So after my two weeks, that's when I had to go and sit my BMAT. Um, so for those of you who are not too sure about what the BMAT is, it's essentially a medical exam that's different from the UCAT, which is the main medical exam, I would say, because most universities use it. So the BMAT is used for universities like, um, yeah, Oxford, Cambridge, Leeds, Lancaster, etc. And I'd already sat my UCAT in um, that September. September, I think, um, in the UK. So I did my BMAT exam. Um, I took a few days off to do my BMAT exam, did that. I tried to revise as much as I could, but it was quite difficult, obviously, bearing in mind that I was having to travel quite far to get to the general hospital, spending about six to eight hours there and then traveling back, trying to beat Kampala traffic. If you guys have been to Kampala before, or just Uganda, you you guys know what the roads are like, you guys know what the traffic's like, so yeah, it was hard to study, but I had to keep on pushing, as well as the fact that obviously being in my own home country, I can't go home and not like see my relatives. Having to factor all these things in was um, quite difficult, but I managed to do that. So um, the other four weeks I spent in the private hospital, which was really cool because I got to see a lot of things, so I ended up um, shadowing a lot of physicians associates physicians associates slash assistants which kind of were like even though I would say yeah GPs are like our primary care but they were kind of like a step before your GP um, so that was really interesting to see what they did because I didn't know I hadn't heard of them actually um, before I went to Uganda and then I managed to do research and see that like yeah they are also in America and these other countries um, because the UK hadn't actually implemented that program yet so that was interesting. Um, I also spent um, some time in the AIDS clinic which obviously completely dispelled um, a lot of thoughts that yeah I would say quite ignorant thoughts that you have towards the disease. I think a lot of us still when we think of diseases like AIDS and HIV have imagery of people who are suffering with it in you know the 1970s 1980s where the medication wasn't as good however now that obviously they have all these antivirals that they can take as long as um, these patients the ones that I saw as long as they were re taking the medication um, they were living pretty relatively you know normal lives